Happy Easter, everyone. And as we enter into our second day of the Easter octave, I just want to begin this reflection by just laying out a couple things about this special time in the church. For those that don't remember or may have forgotten, we are on the second day of the Easter octave, so Monday, April 13th. And this octave will continue through next Sunday, Divine Mercy Sunday. So every day of the octave of Easter is supposed to be just like Easter Sunday. This is the church's way of helping us to prolong the joy of Easter Sunday into these additional days. And if we were celebrating a daily Mass in our church, there would be a spoken Gloria every day. There would have been an option to do a sprinkling, sprinkling rite every day that reminds us of our baptism. But also, the church holds up um, a special set of readings for all the first readings for the octave. So starting today with Acts chapter 2, we're going to have a continuous reading for the first reading of all these Masses through Saturday morning. And it will conclude with Acts chapter 4. And in these three chapters, we're going to hear how the apostles, by the power of the Holy Spirit, do amazing things. And these events only happen because of the resurrection. So if you want to understand more about these readings, go back to the beginning of the books of Acts, read chapter 1, and again, it'll set the stage better for these readings that we'll be hearing over the next six days. But there's a summary line today that actually, I think, does a pretty good job of laying out what's at stake. Because at the end of today's readings from the second chapter of Acts, St. Peter says the following, God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses. And they are witnesses in the fact that they were scared, frightened men. But after the resurrection and through the power of the Holy Spirit, they are no longer afraid. In fact, they're filled with wisdom. They can speak different languages. They are transformed. And this reality is is something that is only possible because of the resurrection. So these readings in a special way speak to the power and glory of the resurrection because we see them transformed. We see them being different. In fact, we call them apostles because of this change, because they were sent by Christ. Apostle means to be sent. So they are witnesses to Christ because their lives have been transformed in such a way that they do amazing things in the name of Christ. So I think these readings in many ways hopefully challenge us in our own lives to asking ourselves the questions, this question. How are we witnessing the Christ in our life? How are we sharing the good news of Jesus Christ in our lives? And, and yes, it would be amazing if some of us could do the amazing miracles that Peter did. Or if we could speak as convincingly as the apostles did as we hear through the Acts of the Apostles. But that may not be what the Lord wants for us. He may simply want us to have that conversation with a family member who's struggling in faith. Maybe that's how we're to witness to Jesus Christ in our life. Maybe we need to be kinder to our coworkers to witness to Christ to them. Whatever it is, the power of the resurrection and furthermore, the grace given to us by the Holy Spirit is calling us to witness, to show forth Christ's love in this world. And again, each day we're going to return to this constant theme and just try to grow in it and see how, again, through a continued reflection on the apostles' witness we can learn some things and truly be better witnesses to Christ in our own lives. So I hope and pray that you have a blessed Easter octave. Please know all my thoughts and prayers for all of you, and if you need anything, please don't hesitate to contact the parish office. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us.